Hi, my name is Reed Bailey, and this is a video on independent sample t-tests in a series of videos on intuitive statistics, where we're interested really in getting you to know when to use certain tests, not so much the basic math behind the statistical test. We assume you've either already had a class on that or can go find materials that cover that material adequately. Our example today is on injection molding, in particular with cell phone casings, and imagine that there were um, an experiment run where the cell phone casings were cooled down for either 10 seconds or 20 seconds prior to removal from the mold. They want to see if that affects the, the appearance of the cell phone casings. Now appearance in this case is measured on a 1 to 10 scale. And let's assume that that scale has interval properties. Here's the data that we use for this example. Now here's a representation of this data. We imagine we have two samples, one of them for the 10 second cooldown, one for the 20 second cooldown. And each of these has some distribution around some mean value. In this case, we show them as normal distributions. This is not the actual data that we just showed you a minute ago though. So we can see that there's a Y bar for the 10 second cooldown, a Y bar for the 20 second cooldown. And then we can think collectively about sort of how spread out is the data overall. And at this point, we're really just going to use the word average spread, not any more um, technical term than that. Using just these terms, the mean of each set of data and how spread out the data is as a whole, what measure do you think you could construct using only these three terms that would be an effective measure of whether the two sample means are significantly different from each other? We want you to pause here for a second and think about what kind of a measure you would create. Now, many folks, when they look at this, can put together something that would work with these three variables. Well, you want to know how far apart are these two averages. So the further apart they are, the more likely they are to actually be different from each other. And secondly, if sort of the spread of each of the two samples were fairly narrow, so smaller spread for each of our two samples, is also going to help us lead to the conclusion that they might be different from each other, in fact. And it's not just the noise that makes the two averages look different. If we were to put that over into an equation, it would look like this. The difference in the numerator, the, the spread of each averaged, or the average spread in the denominator, which would result in a measure that it would get larger when the, it was more likely that the two really were different because either the means were different or the spread got really, really small. Smaller numbers in this case, meaning close to zero numbers, so um, would be ones where it's less likely that these two are actually different from each other. The two means are really close to each other or the spread of each is so large that it, it drowns out any difference between the two means. Well, this fairly common you know, sense sort of equation when we look at it in this way could be converted with some more technical terms to say, well, okay, instead of average spread, that's the pooled standard error of our data. We could replace that with the actual equation for the pooled standard error, which includes the pooled standard deviation, which has an equation of its own that's kind of large. All this is, is the normal two sample T statistic. The point of showing you this is to demystify a little bit the large equation you might see in a textbook for the t-statistic with what it's really doing, which is a fairly common sense calculation where the larger the value of the t-statistic, the more likely it is that those two means are actually different from each other. Now we're going to go to mini tab and see how we can run two sample independent samples t-test for the data that we have. Well, here we are on Minitab, and here's our data over here um, on the left two most columns, C1 and C2. We have 20 data points for a 10 second cooldown and 20 data points for a 20 second cooldown. Now, the first thing we're going to do in this case is graph. I'm going to use an interval plot in this case, and I want to look at each of these two variables, so C1 and C2. And we'd like to put them on the same graph. So you can click multiple graphs. We want to make sure it's selected as in separate panels of the same graph using the same Y. And furthermore, if we'd like to, we can even put on the individual data symbols or take them off. I'll put them on just so we can see what it looks like.
And here's a plot of our data. We see the red dots on the left half is for our 10 second cooldown time. These are our actual data points. And then on the right half here is our 20 second cooldown time. The, uh, the blue bar shows a 95% confidence interval around the mean value for each of the samples. So not only do you see the independent, the individual data points here, you see the mean value and the confidence intervals. Now just from looking at this, you could probably tell how our two sample t-test is going to turn out, but let's go ahead and run that now. We're going to go to statistics or stat, basic statistics, two sample t-test, and in our case we want to select columns C1 and C2. And what you can do if you don't want to type them in is actually select them over here and choose select. And then right here, choose select. And hit OK. Here's the output. And what we see is that our p-value is, in this case it says 0, 0.000, which that really means it's less than 0 0.001. And we could, so this is a significant difference is what that means. We are able to reject the null hypothesis that these two samples have the same mean. We could also detect that by looking at the confidence interval and seeing of the difference between these two means and seeing that it doesn't include zero. Now let's go back to the slides and finish up. Here, now you can see that we filled in our second row of our table where now if we have two independent levels for our independent variable, then we can run an independent samples t-test. Now in this case, some key assumptions are that each of each sample is normally distributed. For our example, the 10 second cooldown was normally distributed, those 20 data points, and the 20 second cooldown time, those 20 data points, would each need to be normally distributed, that our samples are independent, and samples that have equal variances is frequently cited as a key assumption of an independent samples t-test, but you can run it in software such as Minitab just like we showed you so that it can run for unequal variances also. Now we're not going to show you how to evaluate these assumptions in this video. Now we're going to show you several examples about the Panama Canal questions you might ask and the question is when in these four cases might you use or could you use an independent sample t-test. So one of the questions is which month of the year has the most transit in terms of ship tonnage through the canal? Could you use an independent sample t-test for that? Did tugboat captains who participated in a training program reduce the average transit time of their ships compared to before taking the training program? Could you use an independent sample t-test for that? Is the average salinity of water in Lake Gatun lower than 1.100 part per thousand? And Lake Gatun is the lake that's part of the canal. And then finally, are ships originating in China or Japan carrying on average more valuable cargo? Before we see the answers to that, let's review what you should know right now. When do you use an independent samples t-test? You have two unrelated or also known as independent samples and your dependent variable is interval or ratio. You want to compare the means of these two independent unrelated samples. You also should know that there are several assumptions of using this. It needs to be normal and independent data with equal variances and you can run it in software however with um, non-equal variances where it makes compensations for the non-equal variances. Back to our questions, when would you use an independent samples t-test? Well, for A, which month of the year has the most transit in terms of ship tonnage to the canal? Well, in this case we have 12 months, and an independent sample t-test is only good for two samples at a time, so you really can't use it on that one. B, did tugboat captains who participated in a training program reduce their transit time of their ships after they completed that transit program compared to before? Well, here we have two samples, which is great, but in this case, this, these samples are not independent. It's the same set of tugboat captains before and after training. So those are dependent samples, and we would use a different t-test, a paired t-test. Is average salinity of water in Lake Gatun lower than 1.100 part per thousand? Well, in this case, you would usually just have one sample. So you don't need an independent sample t-test. You would run a one-sample t-test. And finally, D, are ships originating in China or Japan carrying on average more valuable cargo? Well, here you could use an independent sample t-test. 
look at a bunch of ships that are coming from China and the value of their cargo, and then look at a bunch of ships that are originating from Japan and look at the value of their cargo, and to see, then look to see if the mean value of the value of their cargo is different between these two samples.